All right, I'm here with Cameron Karami, and he was born a Muslim, That's but right. now he is serving Jesus Christ. Thank God. And so on this episode, we're going to talk about the differences between Islam and Christianity. And so both Christianity and Islam are from Abraham, they're Abrahamic faiths. They both claim many followers around the globe. And in some ways, the, the two religions are, are very similar. People in both religions are very devout. But in several key areas, they're very different. And so, brother, what do you think are some of the differences between the followers of Jesus and the followers of Muhammad? Well, it's very easy. The followers of Jesus follow love. <laughs> and the followers of Muhammad, they follow hate. You know, now they're not going to come and say that we follow hate. But their behavior and their, um, their approach is fear and control, really. It's by force. I like to say it this way. It's law 2.0, <laughs> if you will. You know, Sharia law, we're talking about. It is forcing down the people's throat um, a God instead of giving a choice. Because I really believe this. When I say in Christianity, the foundation of our faith is love. As far as that goes, it's this. Because love gives you a choice. I always like to say this way. The essence of love is choice. Okay? So in Christianity or in true relationship with God, the true living God has given humanity the freedom of choice. You can choose. I say it this way. You can choose to send yourself to hell if you want it. And God will back you. Now, He doesn't want you to go there, but He's not going to come and override your choice, your, your will, if you will. He's given us freedom of will, freedom of choice. So, that's the major difference, where in Islam it's forced, whereas in Christianity it is a choice that's given to us to, are we willing to follow Jesus and His word, or are we still going to follow our own ways? And so you're able to say that because you were actually born a Muslim. That's right. Your, your father was a devout totally. Muslim. And so you were raised in that religion. Correct. So, so you have insight to, to how they think. And you actually wrote a book called In Allah They Trust. And in this book you say that a recently a prominent Muslim activist was quoted saying that their goal is someday to see the Islamic flag fly over the White House here in the United States That's of America. Right. And then you ask the question, what role are Christians in the church to play in stemming the, the tide of Islam here in America? Right. So, so tell me some about this book. And, and Well, the book is really about informing and empowering and equipping the body of Christ, the church, to know how to confront the, the force of Islam. And I'll just say it this way. We have to most importantly, if you want to reach Muslims for Christ, if we're going to see the church do what we are called to do, we have to separate between the Muslims, the people, and what I call the spirit of Islam, okay, the principality. Islam is a principality. As the Bible talks about, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and And powers. so I love Muslims. Right. And too. Muslims love me. When I go to Muslim nations, I love preaching to Muslims. Absolutely. I find that they are very excited to hear about God, to hear about they love Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and, and so I have great love for Muslims. Me too. But I agree with you, the, the, the principality behind Islam has enslaved Many people. Yeah, you know, most, most Muslims, I like to say this, the majority would say 80%, that's a safe number to say, 80% of Muslims are nominal Muslims. They are not fully practicing Islam as it's written in their book, as far as that goes, okay? The other 20% are more fundamentalist and even some militant, as far as that goes. So, the quote you made out of my book that's more referring to those. Now, when Muslims say we serve the same God, Muslims say, yeah, we all serve the same God. We don't. That's a very clear-cut uh, distinction. There's a clear-cut distinction. Now, they mean, what they're saying is, there is one God, and that is true. There is one God. I agree with that. There is one God. There's only one God, and the God that they're serving is not the God that we're serving because God is not schizophrenic. He's not going to come in... Christian in the Bible 
represent himself as love as Jesus came in and fulfilled the law in the New Testament I'm talking about and then you know 1600 years later or so actually 600 years later sorry not 1600 600 years later show up and uh, rep represent himself as this tyrannical God that is you know going to kill you if you don't follow its decrees and call you an infidel as far as that goes so we're talking about two different gods now when the people say we serve the same God they believe that they are serving the same God and they want to serve our God that's why the responsibility comes to us of knowing how to actually bridge the gap and actually touch their heart with the power of the Holy Spirit with the love of God and give them enough I should say draw them enough into the uh, in a way that they want to receive Christ and see Jesus as who he really is because in Islam they believe he's a prophet they don't believe Jesus is the Son of God they don't believe that he was um, raised from the dead and those are all the basic foundations of our Christian faith so let, let's talk about yes. that a little bit so I read through the Quran right the, the holy book of Islam and I found there were actually lots of stories of Jesus. Jesus oh, yeah. is mentioned many times. And so there, there are several things that Muslims do know about Jesus. First, they right. know that Jesus was born of a virgin. Right. They know that he is a prophet. Correct. And so they respect him as yes. a prophet. They know that Jesus performed miracles. Yes. That Jesus lived a sinless life. Correct. That Jesus is coming again. In that Jesus will judge every person when he comes back. Yes. And so all those things are absolutely true. And it's actually wonderful that Muslims know that. I know some churches here in America that have gone so far liberal that they don't even believe in the virgin birth anymore or believe in miracles. And that's so, the foundation of our faith. That's the foundation of our faith. So it's wonderful that they, they believe those things. But some of the things that Muslims do not believe about Jesus... They do not believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Correct. And so actually they get very upset if Correct. you say Jesus is the Son of God. Yes. And they do not believe that Jesus died on the cross. Correct. They do not believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Yes. They do not believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Correct. And they do not believe that he's alive today and that he can forgive sin. Correct. And, and so that is one of the big differences between Islam and Christianity is that we believe that Jesus is God, that he is the Son of God, that he came from heaven, Correct. down to earth, was born to the Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was not something that happened through sexual intercourse, but it was a divine it was miracle a supernatural where miracle. the Holy Spirit impregnated mm -hmm. Mary. Correct. And <clears throat> Jesus came here as God to show us how to get to heaven. Yeah, I always say this to Muslims specifically. When we say Jesus is the Son of God and He is Lord, we're not saying man became God. We're saying God became man. There's a huge difference in the two. Okay, so when you get the right perspective on the situation, then you have a, you, you know, you, 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 you got an openness, if you will. There's a, there's a crack there for for the truth to actually enter your heart. I, I really emphasize that. And also, one thing else I want to e emphasize on some of the things, Muhammad himself in the Quran said concerning Jesus that he is a savior, okay, that he was sinless, okay, and I need it. Muhammad says, I need a savior. That's another surah in there, okay. So Muhammad knew that he was a sinner, and he knew that he needed a savior. Okay, now he doesn't come and say in the, in the Bible or in the Quran, it doesn't say that Jesus was the savior of the world, but he said, I need a savior. So, you know, another thing I always like to say about the Quran and, you know, where we have to have... That's some, wonderful because all of us need a savior. Uh, we do. All of us have sinned. And it's really interesting. All, even the Quran says that Jesus, the prophet, never sinned. That's right. But every single one of us, the rest of us, we've all sinned. Yeah. And we need a savior. We need someone to 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 pay the price pay for our sins. Yeah. To remit us from that uh, from the sin that's in our heart. And the only person that can do that in our life is someone that has never sinned. That's why Jesus was the redemption of mankind. He was the price that God paid for our freedom from sin. 
and healing and other things as far as that goes but you know that's the major thing so the, the key is this as far as um as far as you know communicating this i really believe that, you know the the i like to say this when people ask me how do you how do you uh, preach the gospel to the muslims i always say you better be able to manifest the miracles of jesus because muslims do believe in miracles of jesus yeah and, and actually uh, when we go to muslim nations we invite people to come and we we pray in the name of That's jesus right. and, and jesus performs great miracles yeah. Even among the Muslims in the crowd, Correct. sometimes we see more miracles among the Muslims than we do even among the, the Christian population Absolutely. because they're, they're looking to Jesus and they put their faith in him. And, and, and Jesus does these Muslims. And so Muslims will come up on the platform and, and, and say, I, I, Jesus healed me. <clears throat> yeah. You know what that is? It's because Muslims believe Jesus is a healer. He's a miracle worker. Not only a great prophet, but they do believe that Jesus was a miracle worker. He did miracles. Okay, they do believe that. Therefore, whatever you believe, you'll invite into your life. You know, you invite the miracles into your life when you are basically, when you, you know, when you're believing that Jesus is the healer. That's why you see miracles and supernatural event, things take place in the meetings that, uh, and I see it in my, you know, in my meetings that I do when I go, you know, overseas and uh, having passed, two years because of the COVID and all that stuff. But the bottom line to it is this, that um, as I had done all these meetings and everything like that, they are so open and receptive to the gospel, to the miracle working power. And I like to say this, like Kenneth Hagin used to say, that miracles are the dinner, dinner bell for the sinners. So once they see a miracle, now they're open to hear the, the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ not only they can do miracle in their life, but they can he can also forgive them of their sins. That's wonderful. Praise God. So, on your your television program, mm -hmm. which is called the Voice of Freedom, right. you are preaching every day, single day, to single day. to days. Farsi speaking Muslims mm -hmm. all over the world, but especially in the nation of Iran, Iran, and you've Afghanistan, been hearing, and Tajikistan. Those are the most populated. I mean, they, they speak uh, Farsi. Farsi speaking. Yeah. That, that's wonderful. And, and so tell me about some of the testimonies that you've heard of Muslims encountering Jesus. I'll tell you, the, the most consistent um, um, statement you hear from Muslims, specifically in Iran, is they, they're asking each other, this is amazing, they're asking each other, have you seen a man in a white robe in your dreams lately? They ask that. Jesus is appearing to to Muslims around the world, particularly in the Middle East I'm talking about, um, and revealing himself as who he really is. You know, I recall one particular testimony that this is actually really interesting that a, um, I got this email, a letter from, um, through an email to, to me that this man was in charge of confiscating Bibles or any material that had to do with Christianity and Judaism in Iran. This is in actually the city of Mashhad. Okay, which is north, northeast, northwest, excuse me. And um, so what happened was, and he walks into this storage place that they're confiscating everything, they gather everything, and then they ship everything to Tehran, the capital city. He's, his email told me, he says, I walked into this place with a few of our people, and he says there was one particular book that just keep highlighting to me, it was just jumping off, it almost like, it was like there was a light on this book. He says, and I went and grabbed it and stuffed it in my pocket, trying to hide it from his friends around him. Okay. He says, when I got home, it was a little pocket Bible, New Testament. He says, when I opened it and I read, my eye fell on the scripture, the peace came all over me. One sentence, one one verse that he read, the peace of God just flooded his life. He says, I knew something was happening inside of me. He says, then what happens is that same night, I'm sitting there wondering what's happened to me. I turned the TV on and your program, that's why he's emailing me. He says, your program came on and you were quoting the exact same scripture. Talk about how wow, amazing so God, God is. Orchestrating. orchestrating. And these orchestrations, I call it supernatural orchestrations of God are happening consistently. How do you do that? I mean, we pro we record our programs two months ahead. 
And then how God strategizes and puts that in. So he reads in the New Testament and then watches you quoting same that scripture, same scripture. Gives his heart to the Lord that wow. night. And then as a result of that, began, I mean, just change, received such, I mean, such radical change in his life to the point that he begins to tell his other two brothers that were also, that these guys are part of the Iranian intelligence. In Iranian intelligence, wow. forget, like I said, they were, their yeah. job was to gather materials that had to do anything against Islam. That's, we're not against Islam, we're just sharing gospel. Okay, So material, books, anything like that, they would confiscate it. So he says that the next thing you know, I began to share that, and his brothers were in a higher rank in the intelligence and in the military of Iranian regime, as far as that goes. He began to share that with his brothers, and the brothers turned on him and threw him in prison. Wow. Okay. He says, I was good this. I was in the prison for 52 days in solitary confinement. This is in his, in his email. Okay. And he says, and Jesus would come into my solitary confinement and comfort me. When you have Jesus, you're not alone. No, exactly. Jesus would come in. He says, the first time this bright light entered into his cell. And began to talk to him and he says i am jesus and i'm you know and i will get you out of here and on the 52nd of that the day before he gets out jesus shows up he says you're good now and the lord got him out supernaturally he shares that and then he he says just you know keep your mouth shut i will get you out of here and then he's obviously sending me email recently i got another email from him he says i don't know if you remember me but i say recently in the past year he says, if, I don't know if you remember me, I am such and such. I knew exactly, the moment he told me, he recounted that story, he was, uh, I knew exactly what he was talking about. So God has done amazing things in his life. He says, I'm still in Iran, and I'm sharing my faith, sharing what Jesus did, and I'm still following Jesus, I'm still walking with Jesus. I am under surveillance, but I'm still sharing my faith with people that I come in contact with. It's awesome, man. God is doing something. That's a, one example. And I could tell you, it's encounter after encounter of these supernatural things that are happening in people's lives. How many people over the years have sent you emails or called you and, and, and said that they've been impacted by you? Just like I said in the last the episode that we did, you know, I was getting on average a thousand phone calls and emails all combined, on average about that when they first started broadcasting, okay? When the government got wind of this, they began to monitor and just really began to increase persecution in Iran, which actually backfired on them, and now the church is growing. Mm. Persecution is the, you know, it's the precursor to revival and increase as far as that goes in the Bible. So, so um, I would say, you know, I mean, on average, I mean, we've seen thousands upon thousands give, give their life to the Lord. It's really hard to monetize and monitor because you really, it's not like in America where you can actually, when you broadcast, they can actually tell how many people are watching. But it's in the thousands. Oh yeah, it's in thousands. Yeah. You know, I really believe, you know, based on, you know, I give you an example. When in 2016, two different networks, both TBN, which I'm, my program's on that right now, six days a week, as well as CBN, which has got a network there. And I used to be on that as well. And I just felt like, you know, just bringing all the focus on one network as far as that goes. But CBN had done some uh, extensive research in the beginning stage of the launch. You know, both networks came on the scene within three months of each other, each other in 2006. And I was on them daily, on both of them, okay? What happened was CBN reported that in 18 months, 864,000 Iranians had given their hearts to Christ. Wow. In, from, from September, in 18 months. 2006 through 2008, 864. Now these are reported, you know, testimonies. You know, people that contact our ministry that we would report to them, and other ministries that are also were working on that network. These network, so they were reporting the salvations, the miracles, and the contacts they had. 864,000 uh, souls coming to Christ in 18 months' time. I really believe because of what they. The, the, the oppression because of the government's involvement is trying to crush the church as much as it's tried. A lot of people are not necessarily coming public with their faith necessarily, but they are born again. 
They say there's an anywhere from one, one to one and a half million Iranians that have given their heart to, li to the Lord since the beginning of the revolution. Wow. I really believe it is far more than you that. You think it's more? I believe it's between 10 to 12 million. Wow. I really believe that. In, in well, I believe that there will come a time where the walls of Islam will fall and Iran will it's already open up. Done. And, and so when that happens, I want to go and, and do gospel festivals go together, in, <laughs> in Iran. Let's go do it together Amen. because because the day will come and, and, and many people will, will come to Jesus. You know, I know you do crusades and what have you. I've yeah. followed when, we're, when we're in Islam, Islamic countries, we call them festivals because crusade yeah. maybe has a little bit of a negative context. Amen. But, but festivals. You know, but I actually have seen this, you know, in the first couple years when I came to Christ, Daniel. I kept seeing, having these dreams, and I just would say to my son, that's crazy. How can I, how could that even happen? I could not even see in vision. The Lord was showing me things down the road, but I could not just see how can, is that going to happen in Iran? As far as that. But I began to see these crusades in major cities in Iran. And, uh, I, might, I, have a I think that's a vision that comes from God. It is a vision from God. I got a vision board that I carry around with me, my phone and everything like that. And there is a stadium in Iran, which is the largest stadium, soccer stadium in Iran. It's called the Freedom Station, Freedom, uh, Freedom Stadium, you know. And I've seen the stadium packed out with 100,000 plus people. Wow. Worshipping God, worshipping Jesus. And we're going to do that. I believe Let's that do that it together. I, I, I will, believe you. We'll, we'll you know, I want together. to do that. It's on my heart. I've seen wow. it. And I've been, keep, I've, been, I've been keep confessing it. I'm saying the day is coming. And I believe we are upon it. I really believe that within the next year or two, we could be right upon it. And we're going to see it. When the regime falls in, and, and all that. In fact, you know, I, I like to say it this way. About 12 years ago, when that green movement was taking place in Iran, the green movement was when they, they rigged the election of Ahmadinejad to put him back in. And, and there were that. protests, and exactly. then the protests, the protests were put down. That. I went to the Lord about that protest and asked the Lord, Lord, is this the time that this government will fall? And I was shocked as the, at the Lord's response to me. I would have never thought that kind of a response. He said to me, no, because the church in Iran is not ready. And I thought, what is the church in Iran being ready having to do with the government falling? And all that. So I kept pondering on that. And then a couple weeks later, the Lord continued to speak to me about that. He says, on their 40th year, I'll begin to deal with them. Uh, well, 40th year was a year and a half ago. And what's amazing is I began to prophetically speak in my programs about their, that they've been cut, to the, their, their root has been cut. You know, and I give this illustration that if you have a green tree and you go break off a branch off that tree, the branch is still green, but it's dead. It has no life in it. And before long, it'll dry up and it'll basically wither. Okay, that's exactly what's happened since the 40th year. And they're gasping for their last breath right now, this regime in Iran. And I believe that's why I'm going to say within a year or two, we're going to, I see myself in Iran. Boots on the ground. We have boots on the ground, but me going into Iran yeah. and preaching the gospel because, Pray, because of the protection exactly. and guardian angels surrounding exactly. you. Exactly. And I believe I, I can I can believe it now, if you will, where it was really difficult for me to believe in those early days when I kept seeing those in the dream. Three nights in a row I had the same dream. You know, back in the nineteen ninety three. Ninety two, ninety three is three nights in a row I had the same dream. Mm -hmm. Seeing myself standing on a platform in Iran preaching the gospel to masses of Iranians. It and will I, come to pass. Yeah, and it will come Amen. to pass. And I believe we were upon it. So we are going to go together. In Amen. Jesus name. <laughs> well, let's finish with a prayer Amen. for the people of Iran that That's they would true. meet Jesus. Go ahead, brother. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up every Farsi speaking Muslim, Lord, before you right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that you are pouring out your spirit of wisdom and revelation of who you really are, who Jesus really is. I thank you that they are seeing you and they are receiving you as their Lord and Savior, that they're coming into contact with their divine purpose and destiny, Lord, through Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father God, that an outpouring of your spirit, for you said, Lord, in the latter days, 
You have poured out your spirit upon all flesh. And I thank you that you are pouring out your spirit upon the Muslim world, upon the Farsi speaking Muslims in Iran, in Afghanistan, and Tajikistan. And Father, I thank you that you're turning on the light. You're switching on the light inside their hearts that they would see clearly who Jesus is truly and that he is their Lord and that he is their Savior. And I thank you that you're drawing them into the kingdom as you have ordained it in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you right now for the salvation of this 110 million Farsi-speaking Muslims around the world. I thank you, Father God, for the honor and the privilege that you have given me and others that are preaching the gospel into the Farsi-speaking world. And I pray, Father God, that not one word will return to you void, but it will prosper and accomplish and bring the harvest of salvation that your word produces in Jesus' name. And we give you praise. I plead the blood of Jesus over every soul that hears the message of the gospel. And I thank you, Father God, that Satan's grip and Islam's grip is broken off their hearts and souls and minds in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank Lord you for being on the podcast. Absolutely, my brother. Love you, man. <laughs> Daniel King is on a mission to save one million souls a year, but he can't do it alone. Would you consider sowing a financial seed today? To give, please visit www.kingministries.com.